Greetings, friends. So here we are in Perry Sound, Ontario. We are at the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame and the Charles W. Stocky Center. Um, and is also here in the same location. Uh, we were here a few years ago and we uh, paid uh, to take the tour. It's a self-guided tour, so you can just wander around. There is a few activities upstairs to do and lots of other um things obviously about Bobby Orr and the goal uh as well as uh, there's a cool uh, statue of him inside uh didn't do any videos last time but we wanted to uh share the uh the pictures and uh and everything uh, here that it has to offer so if you're ever in the area come check it out especially if you're a Bobby Orr fan um definitely definitely worth it to uh to come here and check it out so here you go So here we are just outside at the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame in the Charles Stockley Center. I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but it, there is a kind of a picture on the glass of the Stanley Cup, which I thought was pretty cool. So definitely come check out the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame here in Perry Sound, Ontario. from the very start, Bobby Orr was special. Everyone just seemed to know that the 18-year-old from Perry Sound, Ontario, was going to make us all stand up and take notice. Robert Gordon Orr came into the National Hockey League in 1966 with more fanfare than any player in the history of the league. With a record-signing bonus and the hopes of a city starving for a winning hockey club resting squarely on his shoulders. The Bruins had owned Bobby's rights at age 14, so the expectations when he finally arrived in Boston were incredible. It could have been overwhelming. The Bruin club itself made it um, easy for me. You know, I, I played a style that, that not many defensemen played. I like to carry the puck. I was an offensive defenseman. And, they could have said, hey, we want you to change your style. If you're going to play in the pro, you have to change your style. They did not do that. They let me go, and, and you know, that was a big help to, to, to adjusting to NHL play and have to change my, my style would have been very, very difficult. 
and they did not ask me to change, so that was that was a big plus for me. But Orr was not without plenty of opening night jitters against Detroit in October of 1966. I think I was in the rink uh, three hours before the, before the game. When I skated on the ice, I, I, my legs felt like rubber. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able to stand up. The nervousness apparently didn't last too long for number four, as he went on to win the Calder Trophy in 1967 as Rookie of the Year. The following year, Orr won the first of a record eight consecutive Norris trophies as the league's premier defenseman. In 1970-71, he set the NHL record for points by a defenseman with 139. Bobby won the Hart Trophy as NHL MVP for three straight seasons from 1970 to 72 and was selected as an NHL First Team All-Star for eight consecutive seasons from 1968 to 75. And Bobby Orr, the man who put the word offense in defenseman, finished his career with a then record 915 points in 657 games. Whether he realized it or not at the time, Orr was changing the very face of hockey, revolutionizing the sport while leading his team toward the coveted Stanley Cup. I was having a great time, and I loved it. I mean, it was my dream. I mean, I was so fortunate to, to realize a dream. <laughs> Manager Milt Schmidt pulled out the deal and steal of the century in 1967 that brought Phil Esposito, Ken Hodge, and Fred Stanfield to Boston from Chicago. The Bruins began to set their sights on Lord Stanley's Cup. With Orrin Esposito providing the Bees with one of the most potent 1-2 offensive punches in the history of the league, Cup Fever hit the hub in 1969-70. And on May 10th, 29 years of hockey suffering ended in one historic flight. Bobby Orr, behind the net to Sanderson, Orr! Bobby Orr! Orr to the Boston Bruins! As the big, bad Bruins of the early 70s were winning two Stanley Cups, Bobby Orr's legend was growing. He came to be known simply as number four, and youngsters all over North America were lining up to wear the coveted number four and to try and play like Bobby did. There's no question the professionals encouraged, encouraged the kids that are coming along the way they might play, so I don't think there's any question that because of the way I played, you know, I might have encouraged some kids that are that were playing minor hockey. He, he goes over his blue line, he carries a puck from India, we can. Others saw it a bit more clearly. Bobby Orr changed the game of hockey. He made it uh, wide open, defensive, defenseman up the ice, like Paul Coffey now, I mean, um, Bobby Orr, to me, was the greatest player that ever played. I, I don't think there'll ever be, nor uh, can anybody argue the fact that Bobby Orr was the greatest hockey player to lace on a pair of skates. I think I televised a broadcast every game that Bobby Orr played, so I'm a little bit uh, biased in that regard, but there's no question he's the best I've seen, and of course he revolutionized hockey as far as defensemen are concerned. When Bobby returned to Boston in 1979 for the retirement of his jersey and the raising of number four to the Garden Rafters, the bum knee that ended his career and his unfortunate move to Chicago in 1976 were forgotten. A 10-minute standing ovation shook the foundation at 150 Causeway Street. Bobby Orr was home. The night of my retirement, I mean, I still haven't come down from that night. It's, it's, it's a night that... It's, it, it's really difficult for me to explain in a, in a few words what it really meant to me and how I felt. Uh, as I said earlier, the fans have been fantastic to me and, and that entire day, I mean, from the receptions, the state house, and, and I walked in before the game and, and I don't think there was anybody that, that, that they, they missed inviting my friends, people that I knew. I mean, it, you know, it was it was fantastic, and then the the retirement itself was was, was something that I'll never ever ever forget. It was uh, the the highlight of my career.